Hi, everyone. Welcome, Donna, Eve, Laura, Jennifer, Fandy, Mara. Mara, hey! All the way from Hawaii. Uh, Heather, Eve, Carla, Carol. Hi, Carol. Want to ride with you again sometime? <laughs> Amber, Emily. There's so many people. We're just letting, uh, giving it a couple more minute uh, seconds for everybody to come in. Hi, Roberta. Uh, I've got two Robertas here. Uh, Penn, Michelle, Lois, Cherie. Hey, Trisha's back. Awesome. Vicki, Wendy, Tara, Tammy. Very cool. Shell Marie. Welcome, welcome. I'm just waiting for the room to fill up because we did have some comments that. Um, uh, we were starting the presentation and and while zoom was doing its thing uh, People people weren't catching the beginning. So uh, we got two phone call in listeners. Hello, whoever you are I can only see your numbers not your uh, not your names, but welcome Anna Beth Chris Chris floor. Wow. Hello <laughs> Colleen great to see you here Corinna All right, I think we are gonna get started well, I am so happy <laughs> that Mama D has decided to join us because she's going to talk to us about attitude, which is everything. And she has a book called 50 States of Consciousness. Consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Take it away, lady. Yo, 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 it's Mama D. How you guys doing? I, I'm looking forward to doing this. I've been thinking about this all day. Uh, I've been watching a few of the other speakers and I know we've all been crying all week and I saw all weekend. So I want to try to add a little fun to this, educate you, but have some fun. Let me just start off and just let you know, I didn't start riding a motorcycle until I was almost 41 years old. And I was living in New Jersey and went to take my written test, which I didn't know what I was doing. Of course I failed it and the little girls laughed at me, but that's okay. Because the thing is, it's like when they laughed at me, all they did was just spirit me on to be able to come back and do better, which I did. I came back and scored 100%. Then I took motorcycle safety course, scored 100% on the written test and one of the best scores on the driving test. But I could not figure out how to swerve to save my life. You know how they give you this thing, like, like you're supposed to be the bus and you're supposed to swerve? I couldn't get that and everybody was taking this cigarette break and I was over there. The instructor was so cool. They were some of the best instructors I've ever had in my entire life. Matter of fact, when I become an instructor, I want to be like them. Because they teach you things that you can't learn in a book. But he kept saying to me, come on, Brown Sugar, you could do it. Come on, girl, you could do it. So I finally got it. By that time, the, the whole class was, was over as far as the break. But see, the thing is now, believe it or not, that swerving that I had such a problem with, has saved my life more than once. But let me just tell you something else. Now, when I took the course, I already had a Vulcan 800 that I kind of procured from my husband at the time. Um, so the thing is, now you have an 800cc Vulcan 800, which is not a sport bike, it's not a rocket ship, but compared to the 150 that you take the test on, it felt like a rocket ship. So I get on Highway um, 78 in New Jersey, going eastbound. Now, if anybody knows anything about New Jersey and 78, it's like the Autobahn. Now, I am in the right lane. I see a semi flying up behind me. I am horrified. I am horrified. So it blows by me, and I realize, okay, I'm not dead. But I look down, I was going 35 miles an hour. So, <laughs> so if you can, now, you know everybody was going 90, and I was going 35, so that's why. But I want to let everybody know that, see, you have to, overcome those firsts. Every time you do something first, it makes it a little bit easier the next time. So that's what I want to show people. That's why even when I, when I packed my motorcycle on my 50 state ride, and I have this all the, on the back of my motorcycle, the reason why I wanted that picture, other, other than the fact that this is just a badass shot, uh, is to show people, I didn't know what I was doing when I did this ride. It was back in 2006. I wasn't really, I hadn't done anything with other women. I didn't even know there was other women riders. I just been doing everything by myself. 
And then once I um, started writing, it was learning. Everything was learning. Matter of fact, a few months after I started writing, it was two o'clock in the afternoon, a bright sunny day, and I see a woman at a stop sign. I have my purple jacket on with my little bulk on 800 going 40 miles an hour. And as soon as I get right in front of her, she pulls out and blasts me. She blasts me. I go 120 feet, skidded my showy helmet down to the styrofoam. And my little foot was right in the middle of the bumper and the motorcycle, which was a crease of the motorcycle, the bumper down the side of my motorcycle. So I got thrown. I'm in the road. I realize I'm in New Jersey. I better get out of the road because I don't want to get hit again. So they find me with my foot elevated up in the air and they put me in the ambulance and I'm, they also, they're in, we're in the ambulance. Now, you know, um, they need to cut your stuff off. I had just gotten that jacket and it was like a thousand dollars. And I said, if you cut this jacket off, it's going to get ugly up in here. Now think about it. I got hit by a car and I'm talking to these people and they said, well, she looks healthy. They put the BP cuff around my jacket and said, 110 over 70. That's not good. I said, yes, yeah, about right. But they didn't strap my foot down. My foot is destroyed. My heel's broken off. My foot is just pancake. There's open wounds, everything. So if you're eating, I just want to say, but I get to the hospital and before I get there, um, they trying to go through an intersection. Somebody runs a red light and they slam the brakes on. The gurney goes flying through the thing and the foot's going like this. And it's blood just coming out. So I get to the hospital and I'm laying there. I'm mad. So I got a fountain of blood coming out of the top and the heels blowing off. So there's a big old bucket underneath there. And the thing is, the doctor said, do you want any morphine? I said, no, I'm just mad at it. That she had interrupted my ride. And my husband said, it's hurting me. Look at it. Maybe you'll give me the, the drugs. So when the best orthopedic surgeon on call that day walks in and says, oh, we need to get her to surgery now. And I'm thinking, it's pretty bad. See, I'm still in my mind thinking, it's going to be fine. I'm, I'm not hurt that bad. <laughs> so they take me into surgery. It was like eight hours to repair it, but they had to take me in again two days after that to go in and, you know, because whatever's on your foot is now in your foot. And I have said this even before all this stuff has been happening. Nurses are the most amazing people. After the sur second surgery, I'm laying in recovery. I forget that when you have surgery, uh, all your, everything lets go of your body. So I'm laying there like, oh man. So I'm like horrified. I'm thinking, excuse me to the nurses. Excuse me, I think we have a problem. So the nurse comes over, she lifts up the cover, she points and she says, you gotta come over here and look at this. I'm like, no. She said, look, she has no fat on her thighs. I'm like, you got to love nurses. I lay in there in my own mess and she's talking about my thighs. So the thing is, but after that, I'm laying in the bed because I, I knew that, well, for one thing too, is I've been um, hearing a lot of things about, you know, after an accident, if you're going to ride again. See, I have found, and this is just not, not then, I didn't find it out then, but if you're focusing on the ride and not healing, then you're, it's counterproductive. So first of all, you worry about healing, not just your body, but your mind and get that right. Because what I did is well, I'm laying in the hospital and everybody said, so you're going to ride again? I said, I just want to walk. And I want to walk without a limp. So I had finally, I got, got sent home because I was in a room with an insomnia. I could tell the doctor, if you don't get me out of here, I'm a killer. So they said, if you could walk upstairs with crutches, you can go home. So I'm just, so I'm only in the hospital for eight days. They had to send a nurse to the house to show my husband how to clean the wounds and everything. But I didn't care. My job was now to just get better. I had my own personal training business. I drove um, 300 miles a day in my little geo tracker from homes and offices all over the tri-state area. So I knew if I didn't work, I didn't get paid. But I was working nonstop. And all of a sudden, I, was, I made my kitchen chair out of like a, a chair I could wheel around. And all of a sudden, a warm feeling came over me. And I said, I can't wait to ride again. So I went to the motorcycle shop and they think I'm absolutely crazy because they heard what happened to me. So I get a, um, a I think it was a, a Yamaha 650 because it was something I can 
balance. So what I did is I got that motorcycle, went out, and poor thing, blew the motor on her, and because I put 15,000 miles on her in like five weeks, and the 650 wasn't meant to do the kind of miles I was doing, so then that's when I got the, the Valkyrie. And matter of fact, the motorcycle instructor was there that day when I got her, because he had a Valkyrie when I had the court, took the course, and he said, that's a real motorcycle. And then after that, because after this accident, see, I kept saying, what if I would have taken another route? What if I'd have left a little later? I'm getting chills right now. It was supposed to happen. It's not why, it's what are you going to learn? Are you going to be a victim? Or are you going to be a victor? That's the whole thing. It's, and the thing is, it's not easy to do. So everything that I'm talking to you about, it's been stuff that I learned, and I still struggle with some things once in a while. But the thing is, because if it's not just automatic, if you're wired a certain way, it's hard to change how you're wired. You just have to constantly talk to yourself and you have to pray. Matter of fact, speaking of that, right after all this stuff happened, I came to the realization, if you're praying and you're worrying, you're defeating the whole purpose of the prayer. So in other words, if you're praying, let it go. My saying is let it go, let it flow, face it with grace and faith. I say that three times and I relax. So in other words, if you're worrying about it, you're, you're not really believing in what you just prayed for. I don't pray for me. I pray to give me the strength to handle whatever I have coming my way today. That's what I do. So when I go around the country and I do things and I talk about my, this journey on, in this book, it was pretty intense. I mean, it was 169 days. I camped 100 days. I survived a tornado in a tent in Southern Wisconsin. Every weather condition, road condition you can possibly imagine. But see, the thing is, what's cool about this now, because a lot of people treated me very, very badly. That's another thing too, ladies and gentlemen, if you were, who's ever out there watching. When someone's treating you bad, it's not you. It's their insecurities, it's their problem that they're projecting on you. So I'm out there doing this big thing, trying to raise money for charity, which no one would believe me, because I told them I was raising money in honor of my parents who died of heart disease and a young family friend who's uh, su surviving brain cancer. They thought I was panhandling. They were actually thought I was panhandling. So I'm saying, you know what? The money's not meant to be, but I'm not gonna stop. So every time, now it's hard to do when someone's coming at you, because each one of us has had somebody in our life to do that to us. But you have to think that if you're doing something and you're on a mission, if they're coming at you, think about it. It's not you. It's what they are thinking and projecting on you. That's hard to do in the moment because somebody told me that when I was out there on my 50 state ride and I wasn't in the mood to hear that. I was like, yeah, that sounds good, but you're not doing this. But see, now I look back on it, but everything that I've done is accumulative. So I just, I just turned 62 years old. And if somebody gives me a hard time now, say, give me, tell me something I haven't heard already before. I grew up in the hot desert civil rights movement in Oklahoma, where we were still segregated. So go ahead, make my day, because I'm okay, because you're not going to stop me. That's the whole key about life is when you are doing something good, you're always gonna have somebody to try to bring you down. But it's up to you to say, oh no, that's not gonna happen. And you don't even have to say anything, it's just your actions. You just keep going and keep doing, and keep doing. And uh, the thing is, I had a lot of hardships out there, but there was some lot of funny stuff out there too. Matter of fact, uh, I just, I, I even write about this in the book, that uh, I was, you know how when you're riding a motorcycle, you want to be efficient, you want to get gas, you want to pee, you want to take your snack, whatever, and you want to go. I had just done that, right? So I had just done that. I had just, and all of a sudden, I'm riding and I get this wave, and I'm like, uh-oh, I got to go to the bathroom. So I find the next gas station, I'm doing a duck walk into the gas station. Now, picture this. I, I, I go into the stall. And I look underneath the stall, and I see these two little conservative shoes. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going <laughs> to be fun. So what I did is I let go. 
a matter of fact, even in the book, I said, I, you would, I would make an NFL lineman proud. So I'm doing, I mean, I'm just, hey, I gotta go. I'm just doing my thing. And all of a sudden, look, look, her little feet, you know, the, uh, those Irish dancers, her, they didn't have nothing on her. She was just going to town. And all of a sudden, that woman gets up, bolts out of the bathroom, and don't even wash her hands. So I'm just going to tell her, if, any, if this woman, if anybody knows about this woman, just let her know. Wash your hands, and yet yeah, that was me. But like I said, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. But the thing is, even when you're out on the road, people always ask me, do I carry a gun? I said, my best weapon is right here. Because I just don't feel like I just, I mean, I've been over half a million miles. And but my, like I said, my best weapon is right here. It's about being aware. I work with a lot of military. I work with a lot of guys, police officers, all these different people. And it's how you carry yourself. And the fact is, you're also aware of your surroundings. You're not walking around like this, but you're aware of your surroundings. So the thing is, take your head up off that phone because now you're a victim. So what you got to do is carry yourself like this is my world. I belong here too. That's the key to all. Everything out there is how you present yourself. Because I mean, I like I just this is just off the cuff. This is another trip I was on. <laughs> I went through seven thunderstorms in Wyoming. Now, of course, that's what you do. I stopped to get gas, go into place, and this guy comes out and he says, You getting wet. Now I all I did was, now he's gone. I'm inside the gas station. You got to imagine this black woman, knives everywhere. And I'm like, you inbred. I'm just screaming. And I, and I catch myself and I look around. I'm thinking, everybody was like this. They could not get away from me quick enough. But see, the thing is, it's like I had a laugh because I'm thinking, what a sight that must have been. This crazy black woman going crazy. But see, the thing is, it's like sometimes you just got to let it go. You got to let it blow. And that's what I do once in a while. But like I said, on this trip, see, I did, I've actually did 50 states on two different motorcycles. This one was one for a mission. The second one was because I just wanted to prove something to myself that I could do it. And on this trip too, the second trip, I did a 48 states in 48 days and not because I was in a hurry. I know there's people that have done 48 states in 10 days. I have no need to do that. Don't need to do that. But I broke, I felt, went down on some oil coming railroad tracks to Seattle, my 3,000 miles into a 13,000 miles, and guess what? Yes, I was in pain, but I was able to ride my motorcycle and I finished on time. So the thing is, I've had people that tell me, what are you trying to impress me? You're trying to, no, this is about me, it was my goal that I set for myself. And when, some, when you set a goal for yourself, don't ever let anybody tell you you're not capable of doing that. Because I grew up like that. I grew up being told that no woman could do anything as good as a man. I think that I have uh, debunked that whole myth, but that was not without me having to deal with a lot of horrible things growing up as a young lady. But see, the thing is, but whatever I went through then, guess what? It's strengthening me now for what I'm doing. So when we're going through things in life, which obviously we are right now, it's not why, it's what am I going to learn from it? Every challenge, every challenge should be a reason for you to learn something, to learn something about yourself, maybe to open up yourself a little bit more to other people versus being so closed off. But it's not all... I always say, I always say, when I have a challenge, I always say, thank you for that gift. Thank you. Thank you. Because all that's doing is strengthening me. Because you have to look at it at that. So the thing is, with people, there are, like, I could have easily not ridden a motorcycle after I got T-boned. I could have easily not ridden and it wouldn't have, nobody would have even given me a hard time about it. They were like, because I've had a lot of people say, oh, I got hit by a car. I went down on my bike and I'm riding where I'm like, well, that's, that's obviously your choice. I chose something different. And it's because I felt it within here. And I've gone down other times, but I never just say, I can't wait to get back on the bike. I want to be able to work on this first. Because this is, you're a team with that motorcycle. Same thing as what you're, see, I'm going to be writing another book 
it's going to be road trip and tips with Mama D. You know, we're worried about our, our immune system now. We need to start worry, We need to start working on that now for the future, not just now for the next few weeks. So that's the whole thing is you need to be proactive in your life. Take control of what you're given. We're given this for a test right now. People just went crazy. Can I tell you something? Now, if you need 100 rolls of toilet paper, you sick. You need to go to the doctor. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You need to realize that it's more, of, it's, it's a little bit different than just, I don't know who even started that. But uh, the thing is, it's like we have to stop and really pull together more. And I think that just me doing this, I can feel the energy out there. I've been watching, I've been setting in on, on you guys and it's just awesome what you've done. And to give me the opportunity to go and, and spend time with people wherever I can anymore. Because my mission in life now is to make a difference through my experiences all over the world and make people realize that you are your best advocate. And the people that are around you that support you are priceless because it could be gone like that. And we're not talking about just a motorcycle accident or whatever. That's why I've always said every single time I left somebody, I do miss my hugs though, because I'm a hugger. If anybody knows, I wrap my legs around you. I'm a hugger. I miss that. But I always tell people I love them because you never know when that's going to be the last time you see them. Actually, matter of fact, on my 50-state ride, I, I wrote my last words. And the reason why I did it, not to be morbid, but what I did that for was to let people know that if for some reason I didn't make it home, to let them know that I loved them. And so we need, a, I'm not afraid to tell somebody I love them. I don't care if I just met them and we just, we hit it off. I don't care. It's about the fact that we got to connect as human beings because we're all in this together. And like I said, I've been out there doing all kind of crazy stuff. But you know, now my writing is different now. Yes, I could do a thousand miles in a day. And I've done, matter of fact, it was number 13th on leap year day. That's some crazy stuff right there. But I did it, but I don't really, I, I have it if I need it, but I really don't want to ride like that anymore because I want to see stuff. I mean, I've ridden, I was living in Jersey when I first got that Valkyrie and I was riding 3,000 miles in three and a half days. And I was like, Argh. reason why I was doing that was because I knew that I was alive and I was trying to live every minute, every second I could. And I didn't see a lot of stuff because I did that. So now when I'm riding, I like to see things. I like to actually look out, enjoy it. But if I need to get somewhere quick, I can do that. But sort of thing is, and also too, when I was riding, when I first started riding, I didn't realize I was in a very abusive relationship verbally. And just a little over three years ago, he walked out on me with a text and a letter after 32 years of marriage. And uh, you know what is interesting? Talking about a blessing. I could be quarantined with that guy right now. Just saying. But the book that I wrote, was not written the way I wanted to when he was with me because he was kept looking over my shoulder and didn't want to ever have me put anything bad that happened in there. He wanted me to whitewash everything, to sugarcoat everything. And that trip was, I mean, I almost had a nervous breakdown on that trip. I literally cried so bad one time, the people at the campsite was wondering what is wrong with her. I mean, I was, the ugly cry, I was, I have done that. It was horrible. But see, the thing is, it's like, uh, then these people, they reached out to me and they hugged me, they held me. But once he ran out, I was able to write this book the way it was supposed to be written. And every single day, when I wrote the initial about the 50 state right, every day has a life lesson. Every day has something that no matter how challenging that day was, I, it, it made me look back to realize there was something that I was grateful for. There was something out there that I could get better. I can improve. So this book allowed me to write about things that I had never told anybody. So there's things in that book that people who were close to me didn't even know. 
I don't want to go into a lot of that stuff because I don't. I, I want to keep this light and fun and educational today. I don't want to have to go into the because if you if when you ever get the book and it's probably gonna be a movie about this crazy stuff anyway. But the thing is, I want to be able to share with you all the things that I had to go through, and I'm just so. And see, the thing is, everything happens for a reason. And like I said about the praying, that doesn't mean you got to pray and sit on your butt and not do anything. You have to still get up and do your thing every day. It's just that now you're not worrying about the stuff that you can't control because all we can control is this. All that craziness going out there, you can't control. That's why I also went off of, uh, social media for a couple weeks. You know how they tell you on the airplane that you need to put the oxygen on you first? I needed oxygen. I needed to take care of me and to heal me, take care of myself before I could. Because when I post something, I won't post it if it's not real. If it, I won't just post it just because I think I need to put something up there. No, if I don't feel it, I'm not putting it up there. So I didn't feel that I wanted to put anything out there until I felt okay with who I was and made myself realize, girl, you're going to be okay. Yes, you're sitting in this apartment, but I have a cute little cat. Her name is the queen. And I'm thankful to have people in my life who have checked out. Before I finished, what's interesting is, I dropped off the radar so bad. I wasn't answering the phone. I turned everything off and uh, didn't realize my son from Oklahoma had been messaging me. And so all of a sudden, I'm sleeping on the couch with the cat, and I hear bang, 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 bang. And I'm like, what the? And I jump up and look through the peephole. It's two APD police officers. And I'm like, no, I'm horrified. I'm like, what the hell happened? And they were like, uh, your son Darius called us because he wasn't worried about you. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I'm fine. I told them my name and I thanked them and everything. But then I realized that even though you drop off the radar, you got to let the people that love you, let them know that you're okay. Because I did kind of change, I'm changing gears a little bit. A little, a little last year, my sister did commit suicide and the police found her and her son found her. And he knows that I have gone through issues with anxiety and depression and things like that. But after my sister was found and her son found her, I realized that the people that I love in my life, I wouldn't want them to see that, experience that. So that gives me, I'm getting chills again. That gives me a whole different mo motivation to know that I have people that love me in my life that no matter how bad things get I can always pick up the phone I got I got so many people that I love that would be there for me and I am blessed and beyond words and uh that was kind of unnerving but like I said yes attitude is altitude attitude is everything so we as women especially we're gonna let little things interfere in what we're doing what you look like and all these other different things and it's like people always say to me because when I go out there and I'm camping or something and I don't especially if I put up on the Yukon territory and I ain't gonna take a bath because for one thing too you want to get a little funky up there because if you smell like deodorant guess what animals think that you're like food so you gotta be part of the environment. We, we're worried about that stuff too much. Matter of fact, I'm working on only my second roll of toilet paper since this whole thing. <laughs> so I'm, like I said, it's, matter of fact, I grew up, we grew up in Oklahoma. I didn't have running water. We had no indoor toilet. We had an outhouse. So the thing is, I'm good. I can, I'm good. It's called washcloth and a bar of soap. <laughs> so like I said, when you go out there, especially as women, we're always being especially if you're on a motorcycle you riding that big old motorcycle by yourself i'm like well, i didn't push it here but we have to and and the thing is what's cool about it we have deserve we deserve to be in any place we want to be we've earned a place in this world we're going to get out there and that's why my my whole thing is to keep shining baby because, oh, and I also am going to write a series of children's books to talk about a lot of things because I was locked in the closet as a kid. I want to write a, a children's book, and it's going to be this picture of this little four-year-old little color girl, nappy head, looking out of the closet, and it's going to be The Adventures of Mita Joe, how she overcame her fear of the dark because I was afraid of the dark well into my 50s because of that. 
but I want to show her shining at the very end. I'm going to show her a little motorcycle and she's going to be standing on it. She's going to be shining. So it's always going to take this little girl and everybody who reads it on this journey of how you can overcome this. And how many people have I come across on the road that say to me, because I'll say, I'm going to write this, this book about a little kid, you know, being afraid of the dark. And they'll say, you know, both my kids are scared of the dark. I mean, right there, we're talking about seven or eight year old kids, maybe even a little bit older. So there's always, um, like I said, all the things that happened to me wouldn't change it for the world. All it did was make me who I am. And so now when I'm doing this, I ride to enjoy, of course, but I'm just as happy right here as I am when I'm riding now. And that took 62 years. So in other words, find your peace wherever you are. And sometimes that peace is not, you're not ready for it yet, but that's okay. Cause I wasn't ready for it yet. When I was doing all those miles, that was the only time I was happy because I was, didn't realize how badly I was getting abused at home. So me riding like that was my, the only time I felt good was when I was in a saddle, not when I got off the bike. Cause that's what people thought would give me a hard time when I was in that saddle. But now I've gotten to the point now, like I said, if I'm not on the road doing something, people always said, um, yeah, I've been not riding. I'm like, no, I'm good. I just came back from a, an event or a trip or whatever. No, I'm good. I'm cool to chill for a few days. I don't have to be gone all the time because I'm okay wherever I am. And that's such a good feeling. As a matter of fact, when I'm talking about it right now, my stomach feels really nice and warm. That's always a good sign. So what we want, what we want to do is we want to find happiness everywhere. And yeah, that bike's always going to be there as far as that that thing that's going to get you rocking and rolling. And it always takes away, you sit in that saddle, and you know what I'm talking about. Every bit of your troubles, everything, the thoughts go away. Another thing, too, is what I learned is if you work on just standing on one foot, working on your balance and focusing on that, centering yourself, you block everything out. So get something that you can focus on. Like I said, I always say this and i started saying this just a met a little over a year ago about let it go and, and really just say it over and over again usually three times gets it let it go let it flow face it with grace and faith let it go let it flow face it with grace and faith let it go let it flow Face it with grace and faith. And don't ever doubt yourself. We don't want to go to our grave with regrets. We got this time on this planet. We're going to own it, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to own it, okay? We're going to do the best we can with what we have. We're going to keep working on those different things because sometimes I have to self-talk myself. I will get into that. I will feel the anxiety coming on feel it coming on. And I have to talk to myself, no, 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 stop, stop. So it's not like it's just going to go away. And if somebody ever tells you, oh, it's easy. Well, when you're doing something good, sometimes you just make it look easy. It's not easy. It's just a, we're, work, we're a work in progress. I deal with things better, but it still seeps in. Some days I wake up and I have to self-talk and, I, and just keep focused that you're going to be fine. And believe it or not, there's a lot of good things coming in the future that I can't wait to tell you guys, but I want to just kind of keep it under wraps for a little bit. But I just want to say thank you for everything. Uh, like I said, don't go to your grave with your regrets. Let it go. Let it flow. Face of the grace and faith. And keep shining, baby. Love you all. You're so awesome. Thank you. <laughs> There's so many nuggets when you talk. It's really amazing. <laughs> I, I, it's a good thing I'm a fast typer because I was putting them, I put some of those nuggets in the chat for people to copy if they if if they wanted to. And uh, we had uh, several. Well, we've got more questions popping up. Fantastic. Keep putting them in the Q and A. And uh, top of everyone's mind is where can they buy Mama D's book? The www mama d's magic.com so it's m-o-m-m-a-d-s magic.com 
And I'm all, believe it or not, you can get my book, but if anybody's been seeing that I sell my Mama D's Magic Bars, I am now shipping those. You can get those both on my website, the same place. I'm shipping those anywhere in the country for only $40. Oh. Only, only $40. So when I'm, the book, book will be by itself, but a portion right now, a portion of every book sale will go to domestic violence. Because I want to use what I'm doing, my platform. Speaking of that, this bottle right here that has my logo on it, uh, when I do events here locally, it's got my logo, my Adventures of Mama D, um, that anytime the, the bottles are sold, it's one for six and two for 10, 100% of the proceeds go to domestic violence. So they can get my book on the website. And if you want to uh, just check Mama D's Magic Bars, I can send you both. Um, the, the there was a lot of talk about that in the chat. And so what I said was I, I finalized the presenter PDF a couple of days ago, but because so much juicy stuff is coming up in the presentations and, uh, you know, people want more resources from the presenters that will add that to the, the PDF and I'll send it out on Wednesday with the recordings. Um, so uh, Marjorie wants to know what year did you do your ride? 2006. Back in 2006, it seems like a lifetime ago. But when I look back on it, I mean, even when I read my own book, I, I'm literally, I can't wait to turn the page and I did it. Because it's one of those kind of things that it was one, of, when you think it was okay to come out, something else happened, it was back in 2006. Okay. Still says, we love you, Mama D, which we do. <laughs> I love you guys too, love you, love you. Um, Joyce wants to know if she can get your book in Canada. Uh, right now, I'm just doing the U.S. Um, I don't know how much it's going to cost to ship because right now, if it's in the U.S., it's free shipping. So yeah. I'm not sure how much it's going to cost. I could check. I can check and see yeah. what it would cost to ship it to Canada. I'm not sure. I can save you all a lot of hassle because I I used to ship books to Canada and then they started getting lost. There's no way to track them unless you pay through the, through the nose and then it's just gone and nobody's got it. And it's just, a, it's a heartache for everybody. So I mean, you, you can do your research if you want, but that's, that's been my experience. So um, what I would suggest, Joyce, is get a friend <laughs> in the U.S. who's going to come and visit you or, or, yeah, or maybe yeah. when you pop over the border or something. Uh, that would make it easier on everybody because it's a nightmare to ship books. And hers is a big, uh, you know, a, a large, a heavy one, too. We're in Canada. Uh, yeah. Because I'm, I'm going to be coming back through Canada. You never know. Okay. Um, you know what I'm going to suggest is, Joyce, why don't you write Mama D on the website? She, uh, her social media handles Perfect. are on the presenter page. So you can contact her there about, uh, about purchasing the book. Um, Perfect. I'm writing up there. Okay, great. Sherry Lynn, uh, I don't understand your message. So if you could send another one in, that uh, would be great. Um, Trisha. Zaleski wants to, <laughs> I'm practicing pronouncing her name correctly, sorry, Trisha, but I think I got it this time. Uh, Trisha wants to know when and where we can ride with you. You know what, it's, I'm going to be doing events. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start posting events since everything has gotten canceled. Uh, I'm going to be posting events. Uh, I am right now just hunkered down in Albuquerque, and the only time I really leave is when I'm going to mail books and bars. Uh, but yeah, I'll be posting events that I will be attending throughout the year. And that way everybody can find out where I'm gonna be located. Or uh, I, when I'm on the road doing something, I might just give you a holler and I might be able to kind of make a little detour because I've been known to do that too. So people should follow you on social media? Absolutely, for that? absolutely, absolutely. Great, great, great question, Tricia. Um, Eve asks, what's your favorite motorcycle to ride and where can we get your book? Okay. The book is to my website, but the favorite motorcycle that I ride is usually the one that I own at the moment because I found it's like disrespectful to the other girls. But I have to say that that bike that I rode through all 50 states the first time, Big Bertha, when I did put her in the museum, not only did she have all 50 states on her, she'd been to Fairbanks, Alaska three times, all the Canadian provinces and down into Mexico and over 263,000 miles on her in seven years. And so we have 
Matter of fact, when I go to the museum, um, I, I, I see her right there. Matter of fact, both of my motorcycles are side by side in the museum and they have a wax figure of me. And I have to tell you something real funny, real quick. They have put a leather jacket onto the, the figure that's in the display. And I walked in one time and I was like, damn, she got some perky titties. I'm gonna be perky for the rest of my life. I mean, that jacket looks better on her than me. But I'm just saying that that's, but I think the Valkyrie was, has a, spe I know how I am, a special place in my heart. But right now I'm riding a, a GS1250 and um, her name is Magic. And I actually have someone hand painted Mama D's Magic on it. And, uh, but her and I really haven't even had a chance to get started because of everything getting shut down. But I'm going to do 50 states on her and two other motorcycles. So before I pass, I would have five motorcycles sitting side by side in the museum just to show what's possible. Yeah, show them, woman. Uh, Heather wants to know if your book is available as an ebook. No, not yet, not yet. I have some issues with the whole situation, but just right now, no, but it's coming, it's coming. Okay. And all that, anytime I do something, I'll be updating whatever is coming because I'm, I'm also going to be doing an audio book and I'm going to do the audio. Great. Um, three people in a row asked uh, what museum, where, what, what, what are you talking about? The National Motorcycle Museum in Anamosa, Anamosa. Iowa. Anamosa, awesome. Iowa. It's huge. I mean, it's matter of fact, when you, it's all, you know what's cool about it is the fact there's a guy, a friend of mine, when I own my gym here, uh, he's from Iowa and he rides. And he looked at me, because I told him, I said, you have two motorcycles in the National Motorcycle Museum. People look at you like I have three heads. So he was going back home. He told his wife when they were riding by the museum, stop, we have to go in. He goes in, takes a picture in my display and sends it to me. So all of a, all of a sudden I became cool. So he appreciated it then. So yeah, so it's the Animosa Iowa with the National Motorcycle Museum. Okay, great. Um, now I'm looking through, oh, just had another Q&A question. Uh, <laughs> Laura what? wants to know if you've considered presenting at the women's sport bike rally. Oh, I'll present anywhere you want to, if you want to hear me talk and play and have a good time. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. That's fantastic. That's why I'm here. I mean, that's why I'm still on this planet because I mean, just the rock and roll days back in the seventies and eighties could have killed me then. So I'm here to help other people share my joy, share my stories and help as many people as possible. So Absolutely. If anybody wants me to talk, please contact me and let's get this stuff going. <laughs> awesome. There's so much love for you in the chat, which Thank I know you. you're, 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 not, you're not looking at. I can't even keep up with it. It's happening so fast. Um, so if anyone has any more questions or Mama D, is there anything else you want to you wanna share with us? Well, let me well, see if I, I made a list, but I've kind of covered pretty much everything. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. I am going to be starting a YouTube channel. I forgot all about that. I have been saying that forever, and I just i am not, like, techni technically, like, savvy, and so it's kind of difficult for me. That's okay. I'm going to learn. Uh, but it's going to be called The Adventures with Mama D, and that's the same little on here, and it's going to be uh, educational, but, of course, funny stuff. It's going to be Yo Mama Monday, Road Trippin' Tuesday, Well Hung Wednesday. <laughs> Titty twist and Thursday, try anything once Friday, stupid shit people say to me Saturday and straight up Sunday. That's going to be my life. So it'll be every day and it'll be fun. It'll be educational. It'll be stuff, like, like I said, stupid stuff that people say to me on the road. And if anybody comes at me on the YouTube channel, that's just going to give me ammunition. I used to be a rock and roll singer and I used to actually be the front person and I used to deal with hecklers. So all they're going to do is give me ammunition. So it's not going to bother me. All I'm going to say is, did you see what this crazy person wrote? <laughs> I'm just going to use it again. You can't, you're not going to beat me when I'm doing this. I'm doing this because you know how you got people that are always trying to hate on you about something? They ain't doing anything. They're sitting on their asses just like they're yeah. hating. So I don't even pay attention to that stuff. So go ahead and give me some, I'll just use that against you and make everybody laugh at you. That's what I used to do when I sang. I used to make the Heckler, the audience, I'd involve him. And matter of fact, one quick thing up there before I go. Okay, I was singing in the band, and this guy kept yelling out the same song he wanted to hear. Now, if you play the same song more than once, 
you had to buy, you had to, you know, pay the band a tip. So I got off the stage because they wouldn't give me a cordless microphone because I would end up in the parking lot. So they just gave me one with a really long cord. So I walked over to him, put my arm around him. Now I have the microphone like this. And I said, excuse me, but we played that song more times than I can count. So either you can buy the whole bar a drink or you see that 300 pound bouncer over there? He can have his way with you. After that, we didn't have any more problem with him. He ended up buying the round of drinks for the band. And that's what I do. I make, I don't go back at someone with hate. I turn it around though and make them, make everybody realize just how stupid they sound and look. That's how you do it. You don't go, you don't go at anger with anger. That doesn't work. That just, that doesn't diffuse anything. It just escalates. And we don't do that. So we have five more minutes and I have three questions. Uh... Joanne wants to know if you've ever owned any sport bikes. No, but I've ridden, uh, uh, was it, um, what is it, uh, Superhawk. I've ridden one, but I also used to sell bikes. So I've ridden so many different bikes. I've ridden BMWs. I've ridden sport bikes. I've ridden a CBR 600RR. Uh, I've ridden um, a KLR. Uh, we used to have to move bikes in and out. So, and also too, if somebody did a test ride, you would pick a motorcycle to go out with them. So I've ridden so many different kinds of bikes. I've ridden um, because I was the, I ended up being the uh, top salesperson when walking in. And when I sold, I went into, I want to do something different when I moved into Mexico. Now the motorcycle that I own, Big Bertha, had six carburetors. I didn't even know what a carburetor was. That's how naive I was. So I took owner's manuals to every single motorcycle. So we had like 600 units that we had in stock, I would take them when it was like, you know, around the winter time. And I would take a, an owner's manual and study each and every motorcycle and figure out carburation, fuel injected, all these different things. And the guys, used, they were making fun of the boys that were salesmen would make fun of me because I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea. I had nobody to help me with this stuff. I just had to figure it out myself. So before you know it, and I was the only person that worked there that owned my own bike anyway. And I was the only one that had ridden BMWs, and I ended up being the top BMW salesperson, too. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> well, I also, told, I also told them, I said, I have 12 kids to feed, and I need to make some money. So <laughs> well, Sherry, Sherry Lynn says you need a podcast, which is awesome that, you're, that, that you're, you've got the, the YouTube channel coming. That's great. Oh, it's coming. It's if you coming. name it, you know, before Wednesday, I'll get it in that PDF I've been promising everybody. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm crying um, here. <laughs> and not, not from sadness, it's just that that's how I am. You're fun. Uh, and Liz uh, gave us the perfect closing question, which is, how did you get to be Mama D? Oh, I love that. I love that. See, I'm gonna to have to go back a little while. Cause so when I um, had my son, uh, I was 18 and I brought him home. My mother wanted another son. So she took him out of my arms and I wasn't able to raise my son as my own. And uh, so I never knew if I had what it took to be a mama. So several years ago, I started training professional fighters. Uh, the first guy that I, the young man that I started training, he started calling me mama. And everybody starts calling me mama. And then Diego Sanchez, another UFC fighter, starts calling me Mama D. And why that really warms my heart is because the name Mama D means something to me. It means that I earned that title. I earned the respect from all these young men, the coaches. When I walk into a fight, it's Mama D, Mama D. That's earned. And I do know, I'm getting chills again, I do know what it takes to be a mama. And recently, me and my son have been very close, and we're actually going to be going into business together. And, uh, and from a distance, he's been watching and learning from me. And, he's, and that makes me feel really good that what all my actions have spoken so much louder than any of my words. And uh, that's why now I proudly uh, use that name, Mama D. That's awesome. We love you. There's so much love for you in the chat. I wish I, I, I wish we could 
uh, I'm going to give you this because there's so much love for you in the chat. Thank you so much for being with us. You are the perfect person to conclude our amazing two days of amazing ladies. Thank you so much. And I want to thank everybody who is here in attendance, listening. Uh, we so appreciate your, your support. We didn't know what to expect when we threw this out to the universe. We were just throwing ideas at a wall and got on the email. And thank goodness you answered your email because you were in the middle of that um, that's you know, your social, <laughs> social media pause. So thanks, thanks for checking your email. Heard back and, and we, thought, we thought, wow, wow, we've got a thing. Okay, let's, let, let's make this thing. So thank you all for joining us for the first ever having the faith that we could that we could pull it off and uh, and being here with us in this glorious ride with these wonderful ladies. Thank you so very much. And um, for those of you that are listening, um, Mama D, are you going to be able to come to the networking session next? Uh, later this, in, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I'll do that. yeah okay, okay. That. Starting in about 10 minutes, we're going to have the connection session. And great, because uh, that'll be another place for all of us to connect last night. Uh, we were still going strong an hour and a half in, and I finally, <laughs> I finally called it because it's been, we've been working around the clock for two weeks, and <laughs> I didn't want people to <laughs> see me yawning. So all of you, I hope you can make it for our networking session, and if you can't, that's too bad, but we're now connected on uh, email because as when you registered you uh, for the event you got on my uh, my email newsletter list and uh, I might as well tell you now we're going to make another announcement in the in the, the connection session tonight but we do have our next event planned already and that is an in-person conference in Arlington Virginia at the end of the sister uh, the suffragette centennial motorcycle ride and uh, that's going to be August 20 through 20, 20 21, 22 uh, in Arlington. And we are going to do a hybrid conference. So that means that if you can't join us in person, you'll be able to join us um, in the same style of format. But we're also going to have everybody uh, live and a whole different theme, a whole different uh, slate of presenters. Uh, hopefully some of the ladies that we love will come back and join us again, depending on their schedules. But there you go, August 20, 21, 22 in Arlington, Virginia, as part of the Suffragist Centennial Motorcycle Ride. And we can talk more about that in the networking session, but I know everybody wants a break before we join in for that. And oh, just thank you once again, from the bottom of my heart. Brittany, show your beautiful face for the end of this. We want to see you too because you're just so awesome. Thank you for all of your help running things behind the scenes. Um, thanks to uh, the other members of the team, Sarah and Jess, for all you've done running around and supporting us and um, just can't thank everyone enough. And big moto hub, I can't wait to see you in person and gather and do the cool stuff we normally do together. So see you on the road. Bye, everyone. See y'all in a couple of minutes.